I'm attorney Nick Alcock and this video is about how Phoenix Municipal Court works. If you've been arrested, you've got to go to court for a DUI, an assault case, domestic violence, shoplifting, and you have to go to 301 West Washington in Phoenix, Arizona. That's Phoenix Municipal Court. And our office is right at Central and Washington, so we're right down the street from the court. We're in that court every single day. And the court has changed their procedures with COVID-19 a little bit, and so I wanna give a video update on what to expect and, and how COVID has affected the court and in general how the court works at City of Phoenix. So a case in City of Phoenix can take, a misdemeanor case can take six months, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. Uh, the first court appearance is an opportunity to enter a plea of not guilty. A judge typically is not gonna be questioning you about what happened. People freak out when they see on, they've got their court date and they're expecting the judge to be up high and you walk into court and it's a trial. That's not what that first court appearance is. Typically, it's very, very straightforward. You walk in, uh, you say your name, you enter a plea of not guilty, they give you another court date. Now with COVID, you call in. Now what I want you to do is I want you to call in advance. And there's some information uh, in the description of this video that gives you and some links that give you some resources and phone numbers. So click on those links and you'll see uh, the general rule of thumb on how to call in. I want you to call in early, well in advance, days in advance of your court date, because obviously the court can change their, um, their the mode of operation with COVID. But you call, you wanna call uh, when it's your, your court date from a secure line, it's not gonna drop, you don't wanna be driving around, you want ambient noise. That first court appearance, you enter a plea of not guilty, and they set it for a pretrial conference. The pretrial conference is a, a, a fairly informal process as well. What do they want to have happen at that pretrial conference? Share information. Is there a plea agreement being extended by the prosecutor? And do they have the police reports? At that time, if you're unrepresented, say it's a case where you're not facing jail time, you can have a conversation with the prosecutor. Uh, my advice to you about these conversations with prosecutors at the city of Phoenix is be careful. Uh, don't let emotion affect the way that you're communicating and understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish. The prosecutors at City of Phoenix tend to be very professional. Uh, they also tend to be a little bit overburdened. They've got a lot of cases. And so uh, you want to be careful with the way that you communicate with them. And it's always a good idea before you speak with a prosecutor to talk with an attorney in advance. Lots of firms offer free consultations. We do as well. And it's always a good idea to kind of get your ducks in a row because there are certain things that you can say to a prosecutor that can get you into trouble, such as you violated your release conditions, you had contact with the alleged victim, you have left the state when you weren't supposed to, you say some things that potentially could violate your release conditions and that can get you into trouble. You'd all, you could also make an admission. You could say that you did it and obviously that's going to affect the way the prosecutor is going to think about disposing of your case. If you then later go to trial, you know, it, it's questionable whether or not the prosecutor would use your words against you, but it's also, it's just tactically, if you're gonna admit that you did it, understand that that carries some consequences as well. At some point you get, at City of Phoenix, you get to a point where I call it the fork in the road, where the prosecutor's gonna say, look, are you taking a plea agreement or not? And if you want the plea agreement, take it now. And if you don't wanna take it, that's fine, but don't ask for it again. And we're setting your case to trial. Normally three or four hearings pass, three or four months pass before you get to that fork in the road. If you're representing yourself, don't put yourself in a situation where you think that the prosecutor is just bluffing. City of Phoenix, they don't really bluff. And it is what it is. So if the prosecutor is saying, look, here's your plea, do you want it, yes or no? And you have kind of gotten used to saying you don't want it, and then you've come back the fifth time and you, and you think, well, you're gonna get another continuance or you'll be able to hire a private attorney at that point, be careful because if prosecutor is saying, look, the plea is gone, it's hard to get back. It may be impossible to get back. And City of Phoenix doesn't really monkey around with that. What they're doing very well right now is they're being very conscientious and they're helping people throughout the COVID era. And so with confinement orders, they're extending those jail confinement orders well, well into the future. If you are sentenced to jail and COVID is still an issue, which likely is going to be for the next however many months, you can always ask for more time. Go back to court, call into court, file a motion. We can help you with that as well. If that's a question for you, you can call us and we'll, we'll give you some advice on how to handle that modifying your confinement order. What you don't want to do if you've been sentenced to jail by a city of Phoenix judge is you don't want to blow it off because that can create more penalties for you. A warrant can issue for your arrest. And if you have any suspended jail time, that jail time can be imposed. So if you're if originally you're gonna spend one day in jail um, with nine days suspended and you don't show up to jail, 
it may be that the judge will want you to do 10 days in jail. So be very careful about if you, taking that confinement order very seriously, but understand that the judges are being really flexible and they understand that you know life intrudes and, and like your life is very important. So they're willing to extend that out into the future. The other thing the city of Phoenix does, which I think is great, is that in a lot of cases, they'll work out home detention options for people. And some courts are not uh, as flexible with home detention as City of Phoenix is. And it's a great program, and I think that it has protected a lot of people, and it's the right move for a lot of people. So if you have any type of misdemeanor case in City of Phoenix, DUI, assault, uh, theft, any type of case where you've got that 301 West Washington address, you can give us a call in advance and we'll walk you through the process. 602-989-5000 is our number. That's 602-989-5000. I'm Attorney Nick Alcock. Thank you so much for watching.